Hello, everybody, and welcome to Module 3, uh, Public Administration, uh, Democracy, and Bureaucratic Power. Uh, this week's module will focus on addressing the following questions. Uh, what are the basic uh, democratic values that underlie our society, and how have they changed uh, in recent years? Uh, what steps can be taken to secure and perhaps increase governmental accountability uh, to the people? Uh, can bureaucrats and bureaucracies be made uh, uh, accountable? Uh, if so, to what extent and to whom? And lastly, what goals and motivations do bureaucrats have? Uh, who are the bureaucracy's principles and how do they exert control? So the major values underlying American administrative structures and practices include the separation of politics and administration, uh, and the scientific development of administrative principles uh, of economy and efficiency in government. Uh, administrative reform during the past century uh, has been founded uh, on these values of economy and efficiency and have uh, continued to influence the predominant approaches uh, to conducting public administration. So despite the importance of representative de democratic values in, uh, in the United States, uh, public uh, policy decisions are often uh, made by appointed uh, officials uh, rather than elected officials. And this has raised uh, a lot of concerns about accountability and the popular control of government uh, bureaucracies. And things like political values such as representation and participation and equal access often clash with administrative values such as efficiency, uh, economy, rationality, and expertise. And we're going to talk a lot about those clashes. And you're going to read a lot about those clashes this week uh, in your readings and also uh, hearing about it in this lecture and also in your PowerPoint slides. So I want to take a few moments to discuss three dimensions uh, of democratic administration uh, that were discussed in your textbook this week. Uh, and the first is citizen participation. So citizen, uh, citizen participation in administrative decisions is nothing new. However, it has significantly uh, uh, broadened to include larger groups of citizens, uh, notably the urban poor uh, and minorities. And forms of participation uh, include attending open meetings, uh, serving on advisory boards, testifying at hearings, uh, and organizing to support or protest government actions. And something you're seeing a lot now uh, as states begin to reopen um, uh, as we deal and navigate uh, this current uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, global pandemic. So specific indices of citizen uh, participation vary. Um, a great deal of citizen activity uh, takes place at the local uh, level, uh, making it a key mechanism in promoting decentralization. Uh, citizen uh, participation in, involves regulatory activities uh, such as planning and zoning, as well as the distribution of funding to community development programs and recreation facilities. Now, laws facilitating bureaucratic uh, accountability uh, and encouraging uh, citizen participation uh, include things like freedom of, of information laws, sunshine uh, laws, and also sunset laws. You'll read a lot about that this week in your textbook. So another dimension of democratic administration uh, that I want to talk about uh, is bureaucratic representativeness. Uh, and this seeks to represent citizens' interests on a broad, all-encompassing basis. Uh, democratic representativeness is founded on concepts of leg legislative representation, uh, although recently more emphasis has been placed on making all political uh, institutions more uh, representative. Uh, keep in mind that uh, federal government uh, is much more representative of, uh, of the nation's uh, population or demographics, rather, uh, versus a local uh, and municipal government. So again, uh, federal government has done a much better job uh, in diversifying um, in, in, in our public bureaucracy, bureaucracy at the federal level, uh, but that diversity uh, a lot of times is not reflected uh, at the local level. So similarly, another dimension of uh, bureaucratic responsiveness is uh, often an ambiguous and fluid concept as judgments about the degree of Responsiveness vary according to how well uh, the observer's interests are being served. And government, you know, cannot respond equally to every societal interest. 
Uh, some interests clearly are treated more favorably than others, and other constraints on bureaucratic responsiveness uh, often include access to decision makers uh, and also financial administrative ability to, to respond, right? And so fiscal capacity also uh, poses um, a limitation uh, as, as government uh, try, trying to respond uh, to citizens' interests, and we'll see a lot of that uh, happening now currently in our society, again, as we navigate uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so now I kind of want to switch gears, and I want to also talk about bureaucratic power and accountability, and it's something you'll, you'll also read a lot about this week. Uh, you'll see in the PowerPoint slides, you'll also read uh, in this week's set of readings. And so bureaucratic power can be consolidated through two things, expertise and political support. Right, and so the collective uh, expertise an agency may have on the programs uh, for which uh, it is responsible uh, give an agency power uh, and influence uh, because the agency can gain a monopoly on information in that subject area and also increasing control by experts um, on making bureaucratic uh, decisions. Right, and so keep in mind that political support uh, comes from the legislature. Right. And, and from the executive branch and from also uh, constituent uh, and clientele interest groups uh, and, of course, the general public. Right. And so an agency must uh, control its programmatic responsibilities while simultaneously uh, maintaining adequate political support uh, for its operations. Right. And so you think about recent healthcare reforms show how support has wavered between experts um, such as doctors, nurses and insurance agencies. Uh, and also administrators and politicians. And I, I hate to keep talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, but this is definitely playing out, right? And you're looking at kind of like Dr. Fauci uh, and his uh, butting heads uh, with uh, the executive branch of government and D Donald Trump and, and his administration. So again, you, you can see how it's a really tough balancing act a lot of times uh, between public bureaucracies uh, and also uh, uh, executive uh, branch uh, officials. So next, I want to talk about bureaucratic accountability. Uh, and bureaucratic accountability is a concept you'll also uh, hear about and, and, and read about this week. Uh, and it implies that, one, uh, political entities are not beyond the control of others uh, in a checks uh, and balances uh, system uh, or beyond uh, the reach of the consent of the governed, right? And, and also, um, bureaucratic accountability implies that uh, the extent that uh, such entities uh, exercise delegated authority and discretion. Uh, they also have the responsibility uh, to adhere to the will of the governed. And, and it is difficult to explicitly define accountability uh, because uh, political co uh, conflict over uh, the criteria for accountability uh, ensures a less than complete uh, adherence to whatever standards prevail uh, at a particular time. However, uh, bureaucracy and all other institutions of government uh, can be made accountable only to officials or, or to institutions outside of themselves. Uh, and the president uh, can take many actions against bureaucracy to control and also hold it accountable. Uh, also, Congress uh, can practice legislative oversight uh, and look into details of bureaucratic activities, uh, which uh, with the many tools offered to it for the purpose. Uh, although... Uh, legislative oversight has become less effective in recent years. Uh, bureaucracies are also held legally accountable uh, to courts, right? And so because courts can define the acceptable legal boundaries uh, of governmental uh, behavior. And also the media and the general public, uh, including yourselves, are also uh, able to informally hold uh, bureaucracies uh, accountable. So that is uh, what I wanted to talk to you uh, about uh, this week in my video lecture. And also, I want you to also keep in mind that the goals of public administration often uh, present major dilemmas uh, for democracy, uh, especially when administrative agencies are the primary policymakers due to authority uh, delegated by uh, elected representatives. And so I want you to really think about uh, that conflict, right? And so we know uh, that administrative values uh, conflict um, with uh, democratic values, right? And so how do we reconcile those? I want you to think about that as you read through um, of this week's reading. And also think about how do we hold uh, bureaucrats and bureaucracies accountable uh, when 
uh, policymakers, right, are giving more uh, authority, right, uh, uh, to uh, these institutions, right, uh, to institute a certain public policy. So again, uh, think about that as you navigate uh, this week's readings uh, and lectures. And if you have any more questions or if you uh, need to reach out, please do so via email um, or uh, via uh, phone call. Uh, thank you and look forward to connecting with you next week.